the big h podcast tune in now conversations that a while laugh and learn stay a while let's explore that hilton style From the highs to the lows, every story just explodes. Mike's got questions on the go, diving deep from head to toe. Every week the guests align, sharing moments so divine. Stay with us, the pace is fine. Every episode you'll find. The Big H Podcast, tune in now. Conversations that all oh, wow. Hello and welcome to the Big H Podcast and for another episode of Conversations with Crum. And I'm going to turn the microphone over to our town of Parma and village of Hilton historian, Mr. Dave Crum, who will introduce our guest. Take it from there. Dave? Okay. Thank you very much, Mike. Uh, it's a pleasure today to have a former Hilton resident with us, uh, Ann Farr Hall. Ann is from Palm Springs, California. I think her heart's still in Hilton, though. She comes as often as she can. And she's got some wonderful stories to share with us, uh, lots of interesting things, and we'll both have questions for her. And so here we go. Ann, you're on. And what was it like growing up on Hazen Street back in the 50s? And oh, we're talking 40s. 40s. Wow. 40s on Hazen Street. And, uh, and uh, it was not much of a street in those days, a lot of ruts. Uh, and uh, I remember, believe it or not, the Iceman. Now, of course, the younger people don't understand the Iceman. Not the rock star. They, uh, back in those days, we didn't have refrigerators. We had ice boxes. And in order to cool the food, they had to put ice in them. And, uh, of course, some times of the year, the ice melted a lot faster than others. But... Uh, we would always chase the ice man down the street. He'd chip off the amount of ice a person wanted. And while he took off with the ice to put it in their ice box, we were allowed to pick up the chips of ice. And then the summer, we got a lot of ice. We, we loved that. Yeah. I remember those ice uh, man men were, all, or, I mean, the ice boxes were often on the porch. Uh, and the porch kind of sloped. And that was because there was a drainer underneath, right. and the water if the water got beyond that, it would just drain off the porch. That's right. Right. Do you remember the name of the Iceman? I do not. Was it George Wright by any chance? Does that ring a bell? Could be. He lived over on Hovey Street and uh, right next to the Arlington, and he was the last Iceman that I can remember. Okay. That would be Glenn Wright's father. Okay. Yep. Yep. And then, of course, there was a milkman. Oh, yeah. Lots and of them. Our our milk box was on the side of the house. You just opened the little door. He'd put the milk in, close the door. We were on the inside. We'd take the milk out and go up the steps with it. Uh, of course, they also left eggs and whatever. Uh, a lot of people had milk boxes on their porch, but ours was happened to be built in to the house on the side. That was Hilton's uh, version of Amazon. You got it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, then down at the end of Hazen Street, we had the mill, uh, Hilton Lumber and Mill. And our Aunt Marguerite worked there for many years. And they had a pop machine, five cents for a bottle of pop. And uh, I'd go down there and she'd give me a great pop. But uh, we also... I don't know if people knew this, but a bunch of our kids, including your mother, Mike, <laughs> Kathy, uh, Kathy Welch, uh, we would go down to the mill, and when it wasn't open, there was a small door on the side of the large building where the wood was, and we could sneak in that little door and go in and play in the lumber, and we would uh, make forts. <laughs> yeah. and whatever so uh yeah we had a good time on hazen street well that confirms Morrow gables uh 
version too, because he said that was his playground. Though. That's right. That's yep. what it was. And, uh, and they were tolerant. The people were they kept you away from dangerous things. Oh sure. Right. Oh sure. But we did. Yeah. Yeah. D. Gable was there. Ginny Cornish, Virginia Cornish lived right around the corner. Um, Debbie Dykeman, Sally Michael, Kathy Welch, uh, all lived in that. Butch Blair. Mm -hmm. uh, some people know him as Bob, but he was butch to us. Uh, we all lived in that neighborhood. He was Gary Blair's uh, younger, younger brother. brother. Yeah. 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 And there was another sister, Nancy. There were three sisters uh, on East Avenue, on the corner of Smith and East Avenue. There's a double. Yeah. And Nancy and Pat okay. Blair both lived there. And they married Hilton Boyce, Ralph Ingraham, and Kirch. Kirch Gessner, I think they called him Kirch or Stretch. Yeah. Maybe okay. they called him Stretch. And Shirley lived in the big house with Gary and Butch. As she okay. kind of, she was the older sister who brought them up when their parents were gone. So, so the parents had died early. The parents had died. I, I can almost remember the father. Mm -hmm. I never knew the mother. So I can remember Butch and uh, Gary real well, but I don't. And Nancy maybe. In the, because she was married to Ralph, and yeah. you, you knew Ralph. Of course. Right? Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Um, back to the Dykemans. Do uh, you remember May Howard? Who oh, around? sure. Can you tell us? Because May was a Titanic survivor, and her, around Hill, nobody talked about that. It was kind her, of. Her feet were. Must have been. I'm going to guess her feet were frozen in the water. She must have been in the water. Mm hmm. And. Uh, she walked with a limp. You could you could tell her feet hurt her. Uh, but yeah, she lived in the Dykeman house, took care of the Dykemans. Uh, there was a third floor in the house. Mm -hmm. uh, our grandfather had built the house, W.I. Oh, Smith. Really? And uh, there's a big barn in the back. It's still there. Still there. I went by it the other day. There's five a, cars or five uh, there, buggies. There's now that many, but at the time oh, there weren't. I believe our grandfather, Lloyd Burrett, built the barn, hmm. uh, as he did our house on Hazen. And in the upstairs, there was a full upstairs, they had a basketball hoop. Hmm. And in the winter, when the weather wasn't too good, we went upstairs in the, in nice. the Dykeman's barn and played basketball. Interesting. Yep. Yeah, now, did you ever have a conversation with May? We spoke, but not a Nothing. not a conversation. No, no. I, the impression I got, I never did see her, but I talked to Ed or Marl, yeah. and he sort of talks the same way you do. That she was in the background, yeah. kind of making sandwiches and helping out. It, it, and, quite tiny. She yeah. was very small. Yeah. Uh, but she was awfully nice to the kids. I know that. Yeah. Well, that, I think she made that her home. Yeah. And that became her family. Oh, that was her home. Yes. Yeah. It's a very interesting story as time goes on. While, we're, while it was going on, it was just going on. But now we look back and everybody's interested in the Titanic now. Back when right. we were growing up, it was, well, we knew a ship had sunk. But right. There was not much conversation about it. Um, anyway. Um, that also, just beyond the mill, was the ample processing. Oh, yeah, of the some sort. factory. And we were allowed to play on the apples. Wow. I think they were going to make applesauce out of them anyhow, but uh, we, we did. We climbed right up on top of the hills of apples. And that hill of apples is where Hilton East is today. Right. And it was about as big as Hilton East. I mean, it was huge. Yes, it was. I mean, here's a picture of uh, a young girl up on top of those apples. And oh. you can see the house on East Avenue. Um, but it's just an amazing picture. That's right. And you t you try to tell people today, and they don't, they can't vision it, envision it. Yeah, yeah, that's interesting. Well, so the, that was our industrial section at Hill. It was down at that by time. the railroad. Mm -hmm. What are, What are your memories of the Hojack? I I remember, and I I'm going to say this is more stories that I heard okay. than actual. But uh, our mother on Hazen Street, the hobos would come to the house, mm -hmm. which was right up the street from the railroad, and uh, mom would feed them. They also, of course, went to the hotel. 
Yeah. And my grandmother would feed them. And that's what they did in those days. Sure. And uh, Did they do a little work for you? Like, like, I uh, don't recall. I just remember the stories that they came here to eat. I've heard the same thing yeah. from different uh, areas. But I also heard sometimes they'd say, uh, can we rake your lawn or sure. weed the garden? Probably or did. Probably and then, did. And people would give them a sandwich. Mm -hmm. that, I think that was the custom in the area that, you know, you... In those days, that um, that was bad, bad times. Kind yeah. of a religious tone to it that you wouldn't deny anybody a meal. That's right. If you if you had your own, uh, you remember Jimmy Smith? I know the name. He lived with Frank uh, in Cora Cox. Okay, I was going to mention Cory Cox. Yeah, Corey, she was to us. Okay, Corey Cox, and if the whistle blew. We went out the side door and yelled, Corey, where is it? You know, because yeah. Corey Cox was the one who rang the whistle yeah. at the fire department. And she did that up until she was 80, I guess, That's or right. maybe beyond. Yeah. She had the button in her bedroom, I guess. Right. And I know my mother, uh, when she'd hear the fire whistle, would call her and say, Mrs. Cox, uh, where's the fire? That's yes, right. One time, she, they were at a bridge party. My mother called her. And she said, what's up on South Avenue? I'm looking out the window right now, and they're throwing pillows out the window. She gave her a full-blown, and of course, she told everybody at this yeah. bridge party. Yeah. Just that was a small-town grapevine out. That's worked. true. That's true. Yeah. Uh, somebody told me a story once, and I, maybe this shouldn't go on the podcast, but I'm going to throw it out anyway, that you and Aunt, uh, you and Betty Lou had a chip and a frying pan went. Oh, Betty Lou threw a... A uh, dustpan, okay. A dustpan at me, and it kind of took off like a first. Uh, what do they call those? A kite or something? Or, no, oh, a boomerang. Well, uh, frisbee. Frisbee. Okay. Like it kind of took off like a frisbee and went through Corey's window. Yeah. Oh, my. She also, I'm going to tell on Betty Lou now. <laughs> she also kicked up a, a, a kickball through. Uh, the Gables front window with Mr. Gable sitting right there. Oh my God! And we were all afraid of him before that. Huh. We were huh. really afraid of him after that. <laughs> huh. How those things end up? Yeah, that Betty. Well, well we never got in trouble. Yeah. Forgave you. Yeah. Man. Oh, sure. We kids doing that kind of thing. Interesting. We didn't do horrible things. We did no. a few, <laughs> a few dandies. But uh, who are some of the other people around Hilton that you remember? They were kind of significant in your life uh, through the church, through the school, through Na the Main Street. Nancy Buell okay. would be one, and she lived two miles out of town. But after school, she'd walk home with me and then join us in everything we did. And then her father would pick him up on his uh, pick her up on his way home from work. Oh, and her nice. family, I think you knew, uh, some of them yep. lived up above what, yeah. Stoddard's. Uh, about well, let's see. Uh, or the next yeah, Mary, Mary Turgan lived above Stoddard's, and then her mother, I believe, lived up over the uh, stores on Main Street. Okay, and that's the one we talked about the other day when George Edelman right. saved her. Uh, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Maybe her grandmother. I believe. Okay, yeah. Yeah. Nancy and Sandy Smith. Yeah, who lived out on uh, Lake Avenue, mm -hmm. uh, near the Dr. Nundy, the yeah. veterinarian, and. Uh, Jeannie Calmer. Jeannie Calmer would come into town at Kayshoy. Lived on Calmer Road, of course. Um, you know, uh, Bob Tabor. Yep. And we just lost Bob this past week. I did not know that. We Sorry. lost Bob this past week. His uh, memorial will be next, next weekend. Yes. Sorry to hear that. Um, so up on Main Street, did you ever go to the candy kitchen? Oh, we lived in the candy kitchen. <laughs> We're getting away from Hazen Street now. <laughs> we lived in, in at the candy kitchen. They had uh, they had uh, like uh, three booths on one wall, two on the other, and two in the middle. But they had one booth that was only big enough for two people over in the corner. Okay. And, of course, that was the chosen one when you were with your boyfriend. Yeah. But other than that, uh, yeah, we lived there. And, uh, <laughs> just who, are, about. who are some of the people you remember there? All, all the ones we've just been mentioning. Well, I mean, the Nick. Oh, you mean the proprietors. The proprietors. Nick yes. and Ethel and Kula, mainly. Yeah. Uh, remember Louie? 
Louis Louis was still alive. I Louis was Louis. still and Mrs. Mrs. Mary. Pannery just was there occasionally. Yeah. Oh sure. Yeah, and and we we call it Louis in, yeah, in those days. Too. That or was Louis. Or the Greeks. Uh, we called it Louis, yeah. and then they start calling it Nicks. the Greek or Nicks yeah. after Louis was gone. But I think they came in 1915, and uh, they come from Massachusetts. And Louis's uh, brother or uncle had owned it first, but he moved on, and Louis got it. Okay. And they really ingratiated themselves in Hill. Uh, they came without a lot, and they left, you know, very solid citizens mm -hmm. and uh, highly regarded. And uh, remember any of those funny signs they used to put in the window about? They didn't like having the teenagers come down from school right after school let out because the kids would eat up all the French fries, <laughs> and he wanted them for his regular customers. <laughs> and then they get too many in there. And there was something like Ixnay, Bixnay, no CD, no ED, uh, <laughs> little signs that, you know, you had to buy something. If You're you a little younger than me, say. aren't you? <laughs> Not too far. Not too far. Yeah, because they didn't have French fries when we were there. Okay. Uh, the restaurant that went in next door that I never knew the name of, but they had French fries and everybody was excited about the French fries. So that was a new uh, one. So then Nick had them. But when Louis was alive, there were no French fries. Well, I learned that I heard this from John Foster, who's much younger, so that probably ties in. Uh, I remember the uh, the Mexicans over there, and also at the pleasure shop, that you know, a scoop of vanilla ice cream, chocolate sauce, and peanuts. Mexican restaurant. It was Mexican, so good. Yeah, yeah those, those ice cream that sundaes. Was that and uh, Johnny Maul that were the two big yeah. hits. But when Nancy Buell. Her name's Stuart now, but no. when Nancy Buell would stay after school and we'd go to my house, uh, we quite often would stop at uh, Nick's or Louis, it sure. was at the time. And Hilton Record came out on Thursdays. Mm -hmm. My dad was postmaster. Yep. And the Hilton Record was 10 cents. And I would go to the post office and say, Dad, do you want me to get the record? And he'd say, Oh, yeah. And he'd give me a quarter and said, told me to keep the change. <laughs> so now I had 15 cents. Nancy had 15 cents. And we bought a milkshake with two scoops of ice cream. Wow. For 30 cents. No inflation we back then. It back. It was, of course, it was relative. <laughs> yeah, that's interesting. Now, what about Grace Wilkins over at the Pleasure Shop? I went there occasionally. Yeah. Uh, 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 a diff different groups went to each of the different places. Mm -hmm. uh, I'd go there for magazines and and once in a while an ice cream or something. But uh, we knew Grace the Wilkins because their daughter was in our class. Judy, Judy yeah. Wilkins yeah. Was, was in our class. Yeah. Um, Mr. Barilli. The jeweler. No, that's Mr. Robillard. Mr. Barilli was the top of Oh, the shoe place. The shoe place. Yeah, mm -hmm. Jimmy Albano. I forgot His about grandfather. That. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I was talking about Jimmy Albano the other day. I can't remember why, but uh. yeah, his father was Ross Albano, and I think he Ross married Mr. Barilli's daughter. Okay. Mr. Barilli, Vincent Barilli, uh, had come from Italy, and so we had the Greeks on one side and the Italians on the other <laughs> side, and he'd been a POW, uh, prisoner of war. I didn't know that. And that, I don't know all the details, but then he came to Hilton and settled in, and he. And learn the shoe business uh, over in Italy, I guess. And he, the, in the museum, you'll see a shoe shine chair that's raised up. And he would have that out in front of the store where he would sign everybody's shoes, you know, the businessmen mm -hmm. in town. And the businessmen in those days all wore three piece suits, even in Hilton. And of course, they wanted their shoes shined so that they looked, mm -hmm. you know, polished. And, yeah. Uh, yeah, the Albanos of Dungorton Avenue. Jimmy once in a while was down our way. Yeah. Speaking of um, your dad being the postmaster, I can remember when Blanche Randall was the postmistress. Right. And Armand Downs was the mail carrier. Right. And uh, that was interesting because as kids, see, I grew up on Main Street. I, you, you were the Hazen Street crowd. I was part of the Main Street gang, which is kind of like, remember that uh, comic strip, Little Rascals? Right. That's what it reminds me of. 
Larry Way, Jim Hawkins, Dave Grutman, Bob Grutman, myself, Karen Blandick, maybe a few others. And we'd, we'd go around the block. Well, one of the things we would do was help Armin sort the mail. Oh. Yeah, don't ask me how we got into that, but he'd be, he would drive in behind the oh, stores. They wouldn't allow that these days. No, and, and, <laughs> and somebody would say, let's help Armin sort the mail. So we'd get in, we'd toss the mail around, and pretty soon he'd give everybody a nickel and say, well, why don't you boys go and, and girls, uh, go get yourself a nice cream cone over at the pleasure shop. That's how we got rid of us nicely. Mm -hmm. What a nice way to do that, though. And another time we would go over to Bill Newcomb's. And that was what it cost for our nice cream cone. That's right. Yeah, with nickel. a nickel. But, you know, I think that's why we helped him sort the mail, because he would always do that. And maybe we did it four or five times, but it's a memory that's stuck in my head. Sure. I've confirmed it with Dave Grutman, so he's, uh, I'm not dreaming this stuff up. No, but, I know uh, Dave and Eileen, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, yeah, yeah, let's see. Let's go a little further down Main Street. What about um, Mr. Michael? Mr. Michael, I, I still talk with his daughter regularly. Okay. She's in Detroit. Uh, she has the same problem with her legs that her father had and Bev did too. Hmm. Uh, Bev is gone though. Uh, but Sally is uh, still in Detroit and we talk regularly. We we, we Zoom. Oh. A lot of us from the Hilton That's still the Zoom at, in the afternoon on Wednesday. Technology is a great thing for people that are far flung today. Because That's right. Keep up and uh, do those kind of things. Is it, are you the ones that call yourselves the ladies from Hilton? Women of Hilton. Women of Hilton. <laughs> Women of Hilton. And and Sandy Smith yeah. uh, came up with a, a logo okay. of the Women of Hilton. Uh, we haven't met since last Tuesday. <laughs> well, that's pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> but there used to be quite a bunch of us, yeah. and now there's only six or seven left. Well, they're just, it's yeah. just been bad. I marches sure. on. Yeah. I know uh, <clears throat> uh, down at Hilton Beach, uh, we spent our summers down there back in the day. And uh, some of the parents, the mothers, uh, in later years called themselves the ladies of the lake. And I have they, heard of them, but I didn't know which ladies. They were. Be Dorothy Crum, Kate Smith, uh, Dorothy Burrett. Um, Dorothy Burrett, of course, was one of. The relatives. <laughs> yeah, and I remember she would always come over to my mother's uh, and say, now I just met another Burr, and she says, can you explain how I'm related to them? <laughs> because she was from a city, and she didn't uh, didn't know Hilton. She was totally, even when she was in her 70s, she still didn't have it all figured out. She was so many. Interesting. But anyway, there were, there were about a dozen of them, and they I don't know, go to dinner together mm -hmm. or just they were close like you guys are mm -hmm. with friends. Um, let's see, moving down, what about the drugstore? Can you remember Orange Green? Uh, barely. Yeah. I remember her, Violet. Violet, his daughter. Uh, more. And his wife, of course, was a Burr. Right. So they're kind of shirt tail relatives. Uh, Orange was quite a um, industrialist in the community. He came about 1895 as a graduate of the Buffalo Pharmacy School. Uh, Dr. Williams uh, needed a druggist, and uh, Orange took the job, and he dug right in, and before you know it, he bought the corner uh, drug store, which had been a general store, and about three years later, it burned. Then he built another drug store, uh, out of wood, much more um, elegant than that original one. Ten years later, that burned. And forever after, Orange Green built out of bricks. Mm. And those are the buildings that we still have. That still, Hilton. yeah. yeah. Right. The, those uh, buildings on South Avenue in Maine were mm -hmm. built in 1916 by him. And then, of course, the yellow brick building that's still the drugstore and some of those other stores. Uh, yeah, he, he he got into real estate and uh, very successful. And Violet, uh, I think, became the first woman pharmacist out of Buffalo University back in probably 1920, something like that. 
And she ran the store with him until uh, she was 50. And then she sold it to Bill Brinkle. And he's the guy that. we remember. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. I was with Erica Brinkle yesterday. <laughs> now, who's that, his daughter? E Erica would be his daughter-in-law. Oh, Dave's wife. Yeah, David's okay. wife. Right. Dave just donated a lot of the medicines that came out of the basement of the uh, drugstore. A lot of them are sitting right over there in boxes. Oh, I see the, uh, the yeah, little boxes over it's there. It's a wonderful collection, and we haven't quite gone through it all yet, but Amanda, who's our assistant uh, village historian, did a window display a couple of months ago showing all these old medicines and things that, you know, you know, just brought a lot of memories back to people that aren't on the, uh, you know, things like Milltown, which was uh, for anybody suffering from anxiety and, you know, just different things. That, uh, well, you mentioned those buildings that he built. Mm -hmm. uh, I remember the fight after the fire, uh, those few buildings were still there and the bank was gone, but the bank vault was still there. Yes. And they built a wooden walkway from the sidewalk into the vault so people could get to their uh, yeah. safety, safety box. deposit yeah. boxes. Yeah. And most people were thrilled when they found everything still intact in their safety deposit right. box, like stock certificates, jewelry, maybe even cash. Mm -hmm. Nothing you know, was frozen up or what couldn't be used. There's a picture around here somewhere of uh, Bernie Cadian uh, counting all the money on the floor with a couple other people that had gotten wet during the fire uh, that was yeah. still legal tender. And uh, Doris Cadian had saved those pictures and she brought them up here. Wonderful stuff comes into this office uh, over the years, you know, just people drop by and uh, drop it off and some of it not terribly valuable, but uh, it's uh, connected to the history. That's of right. Like what you brought in, and it's up there. The Can you tell us about that? Mary, could you bring that down and we'll put that in front of Ann, because that's a good story. Well, this came from the Arlington Hotel, uh, of course, before the Arlington Restaurant on Main Street. Uh, this, this which most people think goes like this, is actually like this. And it's a heater. Yeah. And in the Arlington Hotel, way back when, uh, they had gas lamps in the rooms. Let's see, we had a picture of one right and, here. Yeah, and this would sit, this would sit on top of the gas lamp and there's holes all the way around and the heat would come out through those holes and and help keep the people sitting there in a chair yeah. trying to read and so on. Uh, and that's kind of like some of these, when you're sitting outdoors today, they have these fire things right. that keep you fire. warm yeah, yeah. in inclement weather. Yeah. Yeah. That's a, that's a, well, I had, I had five of them left from the Arlington. I have a, quite a few things in my house mm -hmm. in California left from the fire or okay. from the Arlington. Mary also has a number of things from the Arlington. Uh, all of us girls had um, barber bottles. There were yeah. four barber bottles. There were four of us girls. Okay. We each got one of those. I have mine and Donna's. Uh, we each had chairs. Mm -hmm. uh, what didn't go to Wadsworth's over on Hill Road, they yeah. put in their barn. Uh, I think we each got a chair. I do put mine away when I'm having a party because I don't yeah. want anybody to sit on it yeah. because it's that flimsy. Yeah. But they're out of the, the uh, dining room at the Arlington. The pictures of the dining room um, we have here that probably show those chairs. And they do, and they show Uncle Charlie Skinner yeah. in the corner at yes. the little bar yeah. uh, where he would serve the dining room, mm -hmm. whereas the big bar was in the other room. Explain to us your connection to the Skinner family. My, uh, our grandmother, uh, Alice Farr, mm -hmm. was Alice Skinner. Okay. Her brother was Charlie Skinner. Okay. Charlie, well, that's an interesting story. Charlie and Aunt Vine lived on Underwood Avenue, number 20, I believe. Okay. And that's where the road ended, on that side. Mm -hmm. And... They played baseball in the field just beyond mm -hmm. 20 Underwood. 
And in those days, way back when, women were not allowed to go to baseball games. My grandmother would go up the third floor in the Arlington and watch the games from the window with binoculars. And I have those I have Binocular. those binoculars. Of That's a good story. Yeah. Yeah. And they weren't allowed to play on Sundays either. No. But eventually, when the Hilton Peaches were playing back in the 20s and 30s, they did play on Sundays at the at Fireman's Field down here in Hilton. Yeah. And there was a regular regular uh, ball diamond there. Mm -hmm. And uh, the fencing and the, and the bleachers, the whole works. When I was growing up, we also, went down there to watch the games. Also down at Hilton Beach, uh, they set up a, uh, a diamond uh, because <clears throat> Nicholas Schultz was uh, also the manager. Uh, that'd be Artie Schultz's father. And they didn't like this no playing on Sunday business. Well, they're too close to the Baptist church and people, you know. Would yeah. Pay. So they went down to the lake and uh, they play down there. Uh, Charlie Skinner Jr. told me about that. He was, he remembered that. Oh, my goodness. And he also um, told me that uh, his father, Charles Sr., went to Rochester Business Institute, I believe, and he played serious baseball for the Indians. I've never heard of this tribe or this uh, team before. But that's who he played for, and he was very good, and they wanted him. But his father, George Skinner, said, get back here, son. You've got to run this place. Mm -hmm. And he, he came back and gave up his baseball career. Mm -hmm. Did you ever hear that story? No, but uh, not totally, because my dad also gave up baseball Okay. Uh, and became a Monroe County Sheriff under Albert yes. Skinner. So Al Skinner is a relative, too. Mm -hmm. How would you? Al, Al and Anna Skinner were okay. cousins of our grandmother and Charlie Skinner. Okay. And Charlie Skinner, uh, not Charlie, Al, Albert Skinner was Monroe County Sheriff for yes. 32 years 32 or 34, years. something like that. He was a real Monroe County icon. He, he was. He's almost falling out of memory today, so it's good to talk about him, to remind people that he uh, was a very popular um, person in this community, especially in Parma mm -hmm. and Greece. He lived over the line in Greece, in Greece yeah. but his heart was in Parma. Right. His grandparents came from Parma, mm -hmm. and uh, he knew everybody here. He attended every funeral in town, and if anybody was in trouble over here, he would help, help uh, and, bail them and out. And his sister Anna ran the jail. Yeah, she was Rochester. the matron. Yeah. Yeah. And neither of them. It was not a pretty place either. I was never that, there. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't either. I heard that. Oh, okay. I thought maybe you got a private no. tour. <laughs> no, no. Okay. Well, let's see. So we we talked about the Skinners and Mary. Uh, you gave us a great uh, collection of Skimmer mem memorabilia. Um, Maybe after the interview, I'll pull that album out. Yeah, I would like to see it. I, oh, I've seen them all. Yeah. Uh, yep. Okay. Mm -hmm. One thing I want to get, if you'll excuse me just a second, is a Skinner uh, relic. Well, while Dave's, Dave's away, talk a little bit about your mother and father and your siblings and your family. Okay. Uh, Dad, like I said, was a Monroe County Sheriff until uh, I... Probably, well, I think it was 1951, 52, 52. So I was 12, or almost 12. And uh, then he became postmaster here in Hilton. And then, uh, of course, he, he had mom. Mom was a Burrett. Uh She was the oldest, the oldest of the of Lloyd and Edna Burrett's, uh kids. And uh, we lived on Hazen Street until 1959 when they built over here on Brook Street where mm -hmm. my mother lived until her death and Mary lives there now. Uh, completely rebuilt the home and she and Tom Tillabine live there now. And an interesting sideline to that story is that all the lots on West Avenue used to go from West Avenue to the creek. That's right. And when Alice uh, Skinner Tar bought that property or 
she and her husband, uh, that lot was still all the way to the creek. Right. And Paul Mary, you lived there. It also went to the creek. So that's one of the last lots. It was. From West it Ed. was before that was Cherry Nichols. Yeah. Uh, to the uh, to the east of it, and well, that one uh, that didn't go all the way through. And the and the and the other thing too is that Brook Street wasn't there until what about 1950? I I, and that wasn't even the whole street. No, the I street think it, ended there at Charlie Nichols' house when I was growing I up. I think that the Brook Street was once like a back alley mm -hmm. that people would take their horse and buggies to to get them in the horse barn, or they might have a cow. A lot of people had cows in milk back in the day, and uh, that's where they got their milk. Mm -hmm. I know my mother said uh, her father had a cow out in the barn behind the house. Mm -hmm. They had the horses. Uh, this is before the automobile. Hard to envision that, but well, we uh, didn't. When I was very young, we didn't have a car. Yeah, no, no. It, it's uh, there were still people using uh, horse and buggies a little bit out in the country here and there. And but when Dad was uh, a sh uh, Monroe County Sheriff deputy, uh, he worked a lot at the fire at the uh, license bureau. He mm -hmm. it was next door or something, and people would come to our house and get their paperwork, uh, fill it out. Dad would take it in, get yep. their plates, bring the plates out and give them their plates. The people didn't have to go to the city yeah. to get their license Again, plates. Amazon. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Back in those days, anybody trusted anybody. Then. And another thing uh, I was told that people used to ride to work together in the city. There was a lot of carpooling going on back in the day. Uh, this is what I wanted to show you. This is something you've probably seen, but it's the, oh, yeah. the yeah. Uh, open house of the Arlington, the old Arlington Hotel. Right. Um, in 1897, and all the stores are uh, listed there that supported that grand opening. And, and we've a, talked about a bunch of them today. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And up in the third floor, I think they had a big dance. It was St. Patrick's Day. Probably had corned beef and cabbage. And At the Arlington, I remember my grandmother cooking on one of those huge wood-burning stoves okay. where you had the thing to lift up the pad or whatever yeah. it was called and put the wood in and so on and so forth. And she would cook during... Bullhead season. I had to. I keep forgetting the word bullhead, but yeah. during bullhead season, she would cook thousands, fry thousands of bullheads, and people came from all over on the train to get a bullhead dinner at the Arlington yeah. Hotel. And they probably all came out of Braddock's Bay. Probably. You know, probably. the locals, they'd bring them up, and yeah. uh, it was all things were done. Yeah. And, it, and down at uh, Braddock's Bay Hotel, not recently but maybe 20 years ago they still had bullhead night down there so oh i would love yeah. a bullhead dinner but i'm not here it's not the right time of year yeah, got to be in the spring right yeah um let's talk about something else what do you remember about the carnival uh we would go to um uh, what was his name eli he had a cherry orchard on where oh. the hotel, where the high school is now. Um, are you thinking of Ira Clapper? Ira Clapper. Ira Clapper had a cherry orchard, and we all went there as kids, your mother included, Mike. We all went there as kids and picked cherries because it was the week before the carnival. That was and motivation. We, we, yeah, Steve Burrett. Oh, I can remember Steve up at the top of the trees throwing cherries at everyone. <laughs> <laughs> Probably, he didn't put as many in the bucket as he threw. It probably ate a few on the way too. Yeah, probably did. Probably yeah. did. But that's where we got our money. To I mean, none of us were rich in those no. days. None of us had any extra money for kids to go to the carnival. But we would earn money at Ira Clappers to go to the carnival and have a good time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah and the carnival, you know, is uh, it's been around a long time. Well, that's yeah. when we used. Kernels of corn, for for numbers uh, to mark the numbers on the bingo cards. Bingo, yeah, I can remember that. We put kernels of corn on the numbers when they called the numbers. Do you remember the uh, dunk the, uh, the oh fireman? dunk the fireman? Were, you, were you ever in on that? Oh yeah, oh Did yeah. You get dunked? No, I 
dunked. Oh, you dunked. <laughs> okay. We were talking. I had an arm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we were talking to Glona Kleinbeck, uh, Chatterson. Oh, and, my goodness. Oh, there's a of, name from the past. Yeah. She lived on Hazen Street. Yes. And uh, she was in the family restaurant about two weeks ago. And she and John Foster and I, she stopped by our table. And she said when she was about 13 or 14, Eddie, her father, put her up there to get dunked. And she said the first ball that went through dunked her. And she said I was too young to tell him no. She just <laughs> did she never did it again, though. But that was quite a story. Yeah. Well, the Carnival's, I don't know the exact date. I think it's before 1900 that they had a strawberry festival on the corner of Main Street in what was a village green. This is before the new stores went up to raise money for the firemen. And that's probably the seed where this carnival got started. Um, I'd have to check the record a little bit, but I think thereafter they did something every year to raise money. And of course, by the time we came along, it was in full swing with a Ferris wheel, a merry-go-round, chair right. swings. I got really sick on those ones. Mm. And uh, my, my shoe came off on the chair swings once. Brand new shoes. Would you, would you I, I finally got my mother to where she would let me have loafers instead of black and white sandals. Or, you know what I mean, yeah. black and white shoes. Sensible shoes? Yeah. But uh, first time I ever had them, and the shoe came off on the chair swings and hit Mr. Misma in the head. Oh, my gosh. Had he been? Oh, At, his, father. his father. Yeah. His father. Well, that's a story. No, nobody would know, remember that until we got it on the <laughs> Well, podcast. I hadn't remembered it in uh, years. <laughs> Amazing what kind of comes out. And of course, I did lose. These days, you'd lose the shoe. Somebody would have the shoe and it would be gone. (laughs) No, in those days, they all (laughs) waited for me to get down off the chair swing and get get (laughs) back. Yeah. So you leave a shiner on his. Oh, yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. But he wasn't angry. No, no, No. they took it and stuff. It was just something that happened. Yeah. Do you have a question that you'd like to... I, I have a couple things. Um, when we do these podcasts and Dave has guests on, names come up. You have a relationship with the Burrits. That's your... My mother was a Burrit. Okay. Uh, you... She would be High Burrit's sister, okay. older sister. And High Burrit, I think they used to name a basketball tournament after him. Probably. High Burrit basketball tournament. Um, I have. I came here to play in the uh, cancer tournament, which is run by the... New, by elements yeah. who, you know, bought the mm-hmm. Ar- Arlington. Mm-hmm. I came here this summer to play in that specifically uh, with Mary. Uh, we always had a family team, our mother, our sisters. We, But anyhow, I digress. Uh, uh, I brought with me my bag of uh, teas and things. Mm-hmm. Hybert, uh <laughs> do you remember? Hybert. Uh, something about the the zoo. About the what? The zoo. The, 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 the beer the tent. Zoo, yeah, the beer, the tent, beer tent, tent at the carnival. The it's, it's something. Yeah. But it's hyper up something, and I brought it with me. Yeah. <laughs> and now there were four siblings, right, in your family? And, so uh, there, us? Yeah. Yeah. So there's you, Mary, was it Betty Lou? Betty Lou and Donna. And Donna. Okay. What were you, did you do any sports or hobbies in high school? I played them all. You played them all. Well, I want to hear a little bit about it because you just said you had a good arm, right? Uh, I did. <laughs> I did. But, uh, and I, in fact, I pitched on the softball team. Okay. Uh, basketball was a, a good one. Uh, hockey, I played. I, uh, field hockey, they mm-hmm. called it. I hated it. <laughs> uh, I, I didn't like the sticks because you were always getting hit in the ankles. Mm-hmm. Uh, soccer and volleyball, uh, those were the ones I played. So back in that time period, you could play all of those sports seasons. It's and, a little bit different now. And I ended up playing, uh, uh, running the playground in the 60s up here in Hilton. And, of course, you and your brothers mm-hmm. and your sister. Three Jill, times. Uh, they, uh, you all came every day to the playground. How many years did you uh, run that? Do you remember? Just, just a few. Just a few. Uh, yeah, I, I ended up quitting that eventually. And... What were some of the early jobs that you had, like maybe in pre high school or high school? Uh, when I was fifteen, my husband and uh, my who turned out to be my husband, uh, Al Hall and I both worked at the IGA run mm-hmm. by Al Warden. 
right. and uh, on the corner. Of course, that burnt during the fire in 65. But uh, we worked our way through high school, and I went to RBI, and I worked my way through there with the high school job. I will say in the summer, a lot of people, Al Warden scared a lot of people. With Al and I, on a hot summer day, he would fire us mm -hmm. and tell us to be back by four. <laughs> In other words, go to the lake, get cooled off, yeah. come back, work the next shift or whatever. Uh, we adored him, Al Warden, and Tilly. Yeah. Fired Tilly. you for a day? Hmm? Tilly fired you for a day? <laughs> he fired so you went to for RBI hours. for college? Is that Rochester Business Institute? Yes, it is. Okay. And excuse my ignorance. What type of things did you study in that business? Accounting office? and administration. Uh, I also took uh, business law, which I didn't like. Uh, we sat in the back of the room and played cards most of the time. Huh. But uh, no, accounting and administration, which came in handy when I became a realtor here in Hilton. Mm -hmm. And I worked that job here about 15 years. I sold most of, most of the houses in Hilton at one time or another. What type of did you you obviously like real estate, right? What did you like about it? I, I, helping people. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, mostly that was it. But then I went to California as a tour guide, so which I loved. <laughs> Dave, I'll throw it back to you for a little okay. bit. Okay. Um, what does Hilton seem like when you come back? Is it still uh, home, or has it changed so much? This, this will always be home. Yeah. This will always be home. Uh, I still meet with the girls from here. Mm -hmm. I uh, on Friday mornings they have coffee at the at the Rexall drugstore, and I went in this week and had coffee. But of course, I don't drink coffee, but I yeah. was with them. In well, there. it's nice to be able to come back to where you grew up and still have friends and family there to welcome you. Well, there were nine of us that had lunch at Dakota yeah. recently uh, from here. That's yeah. great. That's great. Well. We hope you'll come back many times and uh, bring new stories with you that you recollect, because it's uh, it's good. Of for course, the... I usually drive when I come okay. here. Did you this year? Oh yeah. Okay. It's yeah. a long drive. It's cross country. I've done it fifty six times. Really? And wow. I don't. I don't need a map. Uh, do you I, have your favorite places I, to stop. I do, but when I have somebody with me, and quite often I have somebody from here with me, okay. they'll fly out and drive back or. Yeah. Or 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 uh, drive from here to California and fly back. Mm -hmm. uh, Betty Lou, when she got sick, uh, she had taught school for thirty eight years, I think it was, and she said to her family, "I've never seen this country, and uh, I taught school for thirty eight years in Hilton." She said, "I want to see it all before I pass away." She was had cancer, okay. among other things. And uh, so she went with me, and I can do the drive in three and a half days. With her, it was almost three weeks. Mm -hmm. And I felt bad that my sisters didn't get to spend that time with her. But Betty Lou did an album, a huge album of that trip. So they got to see what she had seen. But so you've seen pretty much the whole country. I go all different Hilton. ways. Yeah, that's a great accomplishment. Whatever anybody wants to see. Yeah. I, I, except for... Tina Murray, <laughs> Tina, uh, Austina Ratliff was oh, her yeah. name, yes. and she grew up too on Calmer Road. And uh, she went; she's been with me several times. But one time, she wanted to go to Yellowstone. Uh, I had been there with my sister Dinah, Donna, a couple of years before that, and we never made it. The car conked out on the way up the mountain, oh. and and she doesn't let me forget. Yeah. <laughs> Now, you've also traveled to Europe, too, haven't you? To Italy? To Italy, yeah. with, with Donna, yeah. And did your mom so go? There, my, mom went with Mary. Okay. Mom went with Mary. I, Mary yeah, go ahead. Mary, you travel a lot, too. You New Orleans and many different places. So you're kind of a traveling family. You like to... We do. Yeah. We do. She's been to a lot more countries than I have. I've only been to Italy. What Mary, did you, Mary what did you do in Italy when you were there? Where did you go to Rome and Pescara, okay. uh, which is on the, the and the Adriatic Sea, yeah. Mm -hmm. And I I really liked that area myself. That was my favorite. 
As for the uh, Coliseum, I never saw it because we had waited till the last day to go and do that in the port. Oh my gosh. So, yeah. But I did everything else. I loved Venice. Yeah, Venice uh, is very good. Yeah. I went to the Gold Bridge and uh, yeah, I, I, I had a good time. Well, you know, it's important to travel as much as you can because there's so many things to see and we're in an era where you still can do that. It's right. harder today, I think, than it was back in the 70s, 80s, and 90s. Uh, you know, the, the airlines are right difficult at times and prices are high, but there are a lot of tours. And that's out why there I that, drive. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah. Well, I think it's great that you make that long trip, but, but you know it well. So it's just like getting in the car mm -hmm. and you know where you're going to stop. Mm -hmm. And probably, do you have a favorite restaurant along the way? Not really. I uh, Branson, Missouri is oh, uh, yeah. is a favorite stop. I haven't been there in several years, but uh, a lot of the mm -hmm. a lot of the people have been with me when we stopped there. You take Route sixty six. It's in a lot of areas. You yeah. you hit it here and there. Mm -hmm. I I I'm on Route sixty six quite often. How long does it take you from Palm Springs here if you don't spend a lot of time stopping? Is it about three days? Three and a half. Three yeah. and a half days, yeah. Interesting. Let's talk a little bit about your daughter, Susan, and some of her accomplishments. Susan is, right now, she's uh, she just got a $10,000 grant from the state, and she's to produce some kind of art project for the people in her area, which is the Southern Tier. Okay. And uh, she lives in Angelica. Mm -hmm. And uh, she she does hair weaving, which most people don't even understand it. She didn't either until a number of years ago when she got into it. Uh, she I drove her to Missouri. That doesn't sound right, but I... I think that started with Idaho or Iowa. No. I think you said Missouri, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, there was a woman there who was, we believe, the only woman left who knew how to make Victorian pieces mm -hmm. with our, with people's hair, yeah. which is what they did in the Victorian days before there were pictures. Yeah. They they took, uh, if somebody passed away, they'd take some of their hair, make a flower out of it, and eventually make a frame full of of a wreath, yep. what they called a, a, a wreath, Victorian wreath. And uh, so Susan learned to do this from this woman. And so now Susan might be the only one who does these flowers. Uh, there are other people who do uh, lockets and things mm -hmm. like that. And um, she's got a, a few pieces from all these different things. Well, that's, a, that's a very esoteric craft that it's almost been lost. It is, yeah. And it all started out with what they call Victorian mourning. Right, uh, exactly. After Queen Victoria lost her husband, she set the tone for mourning back in the 18th, 19th century, where everybody, you know, women would wear black for a year, mm -hmm. and they make these hair wreaths, make jewelry out of hair. That's right. And People that don't understand that think it's like kind of weird, but it's really quite a talent. Mm -hmm. And the items are fascinating to look at. It seemed to me that you told me that, uh, and I think Mary told me that uh, Susan made a hair wreath out of all the Burrett family. Is that correct? Our family. Yeah. yeah your Our family. family. Yeah. yeah. And wasn't that on display at Memorial Art Gallery at one time? No. No. Chautauqua. I, oh, Chautauqua. Chautauqua. Yeah. Got it. Oh, Chautauqua. Yeah. I was going to, you got to talk about Chautauqua here. Uh, have you given programs down there? No, Susan does. Susan does. Susan okay. uh, has two weeks there. Wow. Uh, most people have one, and mm -hmm. she's got two. Mary has been a number of times. I have not because I can't walk that much. I've never been. I've been to Chautauqua, but I've never attended that. And it's, Chautauqua was one of the last. Uh, interesting places. Exactly. Uh, what what you're talking yeah. about. Uh, Where they come, people come in and talk about whatever it is they want to when people come and attend. And I don't know how to describe it any other way, but I, I've got to get that done one of these days because it's... Uh, now, does she talk about her, her uh, talent of, of 
her wreaths and making her wreaths. At, at, at Chautauqua? Yeah. No, at Chautauqua so far, I believe it's bookbinding and uh, paper making, bookbinding, uh, showing people how to make their own journals and okay. things like that. Yeah. Very good. Yeah. Well, uh, uh, she does beekeeping too. Uh, beekeeping? Yeah. Uh, a lot of these things started when she was teaching at uh, Pittsburgh. It, uh, at the uh, elementary schools, yeah. uh, but uh, now she doesn't work anymore. She's but well, she's keeping all these old crafts uh, alive. Well, that's this, a great thing. This this hair wreath is is people are donating. They're coming to. She set up um, shows, shall we call them, uh, like twice a week all over the southern tier mm -hmm. through this uh, grant. And uh, people are coming and donating their hair, and and wow. uh, there's quite an article written about her in the OEN newspaper last week. I think Mary, you gave us a copy of that article. You, I think, it, somewhere along the line, that walking tour that we took. You oh gave me no, 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 no! This is recent. This oh, is, is it? Yeah, okay. Last, this is uh, last week. They did this okay. article about her. Well, that's we're, we're hoping to have her come to Hilton sometime and do a program for the historical society. Oh, she would love it. Yeah, we, we, we're talking about it. It's just mm -hmm. a matter of making a schedule. Oh, you asked me for business cards of hers, and that's, I did bring her a couple. Good. That's great. Yeah. That's great. Back to Mike. Uh, you probably thought of a couple more questions. I, I did. A couple, just a couple. That's your daughter. Do you have a couple more kids, too? A couple boys? Michael and David. Michael. Uh, David has passed. Okay. Uh, but Michael lives in Greece. Okay. And you said your daughter Susan was a teacher? Uh, she, she taught. She taught at one point. She didn't have teaching credentials, uh, but uh, she taught at Pittsburgh uh, Elementary School different things than book learning. Okay. Yeah. Do you have any grandchildren? Oh, yes. Tell me about them. Uh, Michael... Uh, well, let's start with the oldest. Candace now also lives in the Southern Tier and has a couple of my great-grandchildren. Uh, and she has like 60 acres down there. And a, she has all kinds of animals. And she is a manager at Walmart and mm -hmm. Victor. Uh, her husband has uh, works for Dower General. And uh, they love it down there in the Southern Tier oh, also. Is this Susan's daughter? This would be Michael's daughter. Michael's daughter. Okay. And Michael has a son, Michael, who lives in Brockport, and he's a physical therapist. Uh, yeah, doing quite well. Uh, Susan has two boys, Danny and Ben. They both are buying houses as we speak. Uh, Danny is just out, going to buy just outside of New York City uh, in Woodstock. Mm -hmm. And uh, he lives right, he's been living in New York City for several years. He uh, started out, film, both of them started out filming, and and uh, I can't remember the name of the man in Rochester who had, uh, did the, uh, talked about the movies. I can't remember. We all knew, knew him at one time. Anyhow. I'm sorry, I can't yeah. pull it up either. Yeah, they, uh, they oh, both won lots. Gar of, it started with G. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Um. I do know him. He's a friend of friends of ours. He passed. Right. Um, right. Jack yeah. Garner. Jack Garner. Oh. He uh, he he liked the work that these boys did. But Danny now uh, has gotten into. He started his own company, and he does. Oh, I know. You want me to talk about Furby? Danny, there's a remember the old Furby doll. I do. Mm -hmm. There, it's coming out again, mm. coming back, and Danny is uh, producing the commercials for it hmm. so that's what danny does he 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 produces and he uh he's an editor he he loves editing so yeah. now are they both down in new york area no oh. uh ben uh just bought a house at seabreeze oh i was down just at seabreeze. seabreeze this morning oh really? yeah with my grandchildren <laughs> and i cut it short because i knew we had the podcast i didn't want to be totally frazzled after <laughs> riding on the jackrabbit uh, -huh. uh, that's what I first wrote on back in the forties, I think, and it's still there today, twenty twenty four. And I wrote it with my ten year old grandson. He wrote it about six times. Oh, once, once, was, in, once was good. <laughs> then I went on the junior jack, I wrote it with my younger grandson, and 
that was uh, more doable. Well, there, yeah. you know, the old uh, Putt Putt Golf Course down there. Yeah. He bought on the other side of that. Oh, okay. there's a little community back in there. It's a great little spot yeah. back there. It's, it's yeah. hidden. Yes. Yeah. It is. And you can go to the park anytime you want to. And let me tell you, Sea Breeze is a historic spot. They used to have parks like this all over everywhere. And Sea Breeze is about the last one around here. Yeah. And that family has kept that up so well. It was full today. Today was grandparents' day. We got in free. <laughs> and uh, we packed our lunches and mm -hmm. had a great time. Well, when Danny and Ben were young and they all lived in the city, mm -hmm. I, I would pick them up and take them there on Mondays. Yeah. Because it was, it was I think it was grandparents' day yeah. then. So it's yeah. amazing how they've kept that going, though, so well. And I think, I think people really appreciate it and try to support it, which yeah. they should. But both boys are very, all my grandchildren are very successful. Yeah. No, as, as they would be, and you've been successful. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, I think this probably concludes, but do we have any parting questions? Or? Uh, just a couple. Um, I talk a little bit about your travel guides that you, that you did, your tours in Palm Springs. Well, it was called Celebrity Tours, mm -hmm. and growing up, I mentioned the magazines that I would buy at the pleasure shop were usually celebrity magazines. And so I had stories and I took this tour. In fact, I think Tom and Mary and Betty and Luther all went on it too. And they, I talked to the, the owners of the business and they kept asking me to come and work for them. Well, I put them off for about three years. And then, uh, I, I worked for Hilton Schools at the time, and they came up with a buyout, and I said, well, I guess it's time. Yeah. And so I uh, I had already bought a home in Palm Springs in 94. In 96, I took the buyout from Hilton Schools and went out there and walked in the door and said, you still want me? And the rest was history. I, uh, I had stories about celebrities, and I would drive for three hours and not miss a beat. I talked the whole time while I was driving because it's the easy way to do it. I could have a driver, but then I'd have to tell them in the middle of my conversation about yeah. Frank Sinatra or something, I'd have to say, well, stop here or turn there or whatever. So it was easier to drive and talk. But my back was to the people and I had no trouble doing it that way. But at the beginning of the tour, I'd say, is there anything in particular somebody wants to see? And they'd yell out things, and I would de de design the tour around what they wanted to see. I'd do about 60 to 70 celebrities on each tour. Wow. Did you have a, I'm sorry, no, did you ahead. have a favorite celebrity that you personally enjoyed the most? Or maybe you even had contact uh, with personally? Lily Tomlin. Mm -hmm. uh, she rode the bus a number of times, yeah. brought her mother. Uh, we always knew whether to introduce her to the people or not. It, she had a big hat and sunglasses on. She didn't want to be recognized. Other than that, she was fine. Uh, her mother, she had bought her mother a home there. And so we got to see her quite often. Uh, who else did I? Tony Curtis couldn't have been nicer to people. Just uh, Suzanne Summers. Um, and, uh, of course, I loved uh, Rock Hudson, not, not Rock Hudson, I'm sorry. Um, oh, what was his name? Uh, Movie star? Uh, yeah. Uh, seven Brides for Seven. Howard Keel. Howard mm -hmm. Keel. And his <laughs> wife adored her. Uh, yeah. Uh, oh, uh, Dean Martin's family. Uh, never met Dean. Uh, he was gone by then. But Jeannie, his wife, uh, first wife, the mother of his children, uh, lived there. Uh, he did live there until he passed away. And uh, one of their children, Ricky, I believe it was, married a girl from Utah named Anne, and they had three daughters. And they lived in Utah most of the time, but they'd come to visit in the winter during school break. And they'd call me and say, Come on by tomorrow. Uh, kids will be out front. They sold lemonade. And we would pull up the bus and everybody would get off and buy lemonade from the kids. And the kids were learning mm -hmm. things. You know, it was a good thing for them to right. be doing. Uh, 
Jeannie would come out and visit with people, pose for pictures. She said, the Dean Martin family is probably the nicest family you'd ever want to meet. Nice. Yeah. Now, didn't you have an aunt lived in Palm Springs? Uh, my mother's sister, uh, another Burt, uh, lived in Palm Springs. She had lived in Whittier, and we all went to Whittier to visit her. And she always said, I want to live in Palm Springs. I want to live in the desert, she'd say. Well, she wanted to live in Palm Springs because Frank Sinatra lived sure. in, Frank, in Palm Springs. And she was a big, she was, what What did they call the girls back then? Bobby Soxers okay. or something. Uh, so one day I said to her, you want to go to the desert? I'll take you. And I brought her over to Palm Springs and we came between. The, Palm Springs is surrounded by four mountain ranges mm -hmm. and that's what makes palm springs what it is it's protected from sure. wildfires mm -hmm. and floods and everything else and we came through that pass and i took one look and said oh my god this is wonderful and uh she bought there and so did i you got the best of both worlds i did Milton and palm springs wasn't sonny bono the mayor of palm springs sonny bono was the mayor and there's quite an article just this week in the newspaper or online, I'm not sure where, uh, it might have been uh, mm -hmm. online, uh, about when the bus went up to, took uh, Girl Scouts up to the tram, which is up about 11,500 feet. And on the way down, it was a young kid that was driving this bus, 22, 24 years mm -hmm. old. And he lost control and crashed. And uh, I believe seven... Girl Scouts were killed. Oh. But Sonny Bono was the mayor at the time, and he was the only one small enough to get through the windows of the bus and rescue kids. Oh. And uh, yeah, he was he was much loved in Palm Springs. He when went I, on there to Congress. Mm -hmm. When I was uh, managing the Marriott Hotel in Fort Wayne, Indiana, Sonny and Cher, when they were still an item, came to town to do a program. I have a picture somewhere of myself with them, welcoming them to the hotel. And I'm a head taller than both of them. <laughs> They're both small. I thought Cher was going to be taller. No, she's very small. Mm -hmm. And their daughter, Chastity, was with them. She was just a baby. It was around Easter time. We had an Easter egg roll in the courtyard, and Chastity went out and sure. rolled eggs with everybody. Sure. So I did get to yeah. go to his funeral uh, in and share, but of course they've been split up for years. But she, she was there and talked, and Tip O'Neill also. Uh, it was, it was, yeah. it was huge. It was huge. One time I was in Palm Springs. We took a tour. <clears throat> it was for a Marriott meeting, and um, I remember going by Bob Hope's house, which was up in the hill, and they talked about it was like twenty thousand square feet or something, but only had one bedroom. Does I've been ring? there. Have you? Yeah. Is, yeah. That, is that true? It, only one bedroom? Yeah, he didn't want a lot of visitors. That is true. Yeah. Uh, but uh, he had two other houses before that. Okay. Uh, one that was bought in 1936, I believe, uh, but it didn't have a pool. He wanted to put a pool in. And the city said, if you put a pool in there, we've got to put up a six foot wall. And he says, I'm not going to put a wall that big around the pool. What will we be able to see? over that wall. And they said, well, if you don't put a wall around it, you can't have the pool. And he said, well, okay. And bought the house a block away around the corner that had a pool. Mm -hmm. And that's the one we showed. We showed both of them. Okay. But uh, the one that they lived in for 40 some years, she would come out the gate and, and pretend to take pictures of the people taking pictures of her. <laughs> Dolores was always a lot of fun. They were quite a couple. Of yeah. Very genial. And, uh... and then they then they built that house up there to be a party house, and that's why it only had one bedroom. Yeah, that was it. And, and the ceiling opened. They could roll the ceiling over on good days. and, and... They had the stars up over yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Well, Ann, thank you very much for this time. This has been great, and uh, I've learned a lot, and I'm sure Mike has too, and uh, this has been a very nice uh, podcast. What, what May I say one more thing sure. to mm -hmm. Mike? I'm not going to say who did it, but his mother, uh, they lived above the Hart grocery store on Main Street, 
and her his mother's room overlooked the street, the main street. And the doorway to Hertz was right down there. And I'm not going to say who, but I heard that there were some water balloons thrown out her bedroom window <laughs> on top of people coming out of Hart's grocery store. <laughs> I don't know who would have done that. Maybe in a future podcast, we'll find out who those people were. Can I ask you one last piece? Sure. What's, what's some advice you'd give to the younger generation of America, like things to appreciate or maybe Please to... and thank you. They need to learn to say please and thank you. They need to, if somebody stops their car to let them walk in front of it, give a little wave or or mouth thank you. Uh, be more polite. Be, uh, the whole generation needs to be more polite than they are. Manners. Well, I've had great memories of you when you used to be our leader at the rec department and everything. And I want to say thank you for being on our podcast with Dave Brom, and when she's back in town, we'll get you back on. How's that? Okay, fine. All right, this has been Mike Ice with Dave Crom and Ann Hall on the Big H Podcast. Thank you for turn, tuning in, and join us real soon. The Big H Podcast, tune in now. Conversations that a while. Laugh and learn, stay a while. Let's explore that Hilton style. From the highs to the lows, every story just explodes. Mike's got questions on the go, diving deep from head to toe. Every week the guests align, sharing moments so divine. Stay with us, the pace is fine. Every episode you'll find. The Big H Podcast, tune in now.